The new Seven Wonders of the World represent a global compilation of the most remarkable and significant architectural achievements in modern history. These include the Great Wall of China, Petra in Jordan, Christ the Redeemer in Rio de Janeiro, Machu Picchu in Peru, Chichen Itza in Mexico, the Colosseum in Rome, and the Taj Mahal in India. In addition to these seven extraordinary structures, the list also recognizes the Great Pyramids of Giza, giving them a special place of distinction. Much remains shrouded in mystery when it comes to these colossal pyramids, and the methods used in their construction are still unclear. Numerous theories, including some outlandish ones like the suggestion of extraterrestrial involvement, have been proposed. However, there is no potential for resolving this age-old enigma, and we will explore why a seemingly simple image could hold the key to uncovering this millennium-old secret. But first, let's shift our focus to another equally impressive wonder of the world, the Great Wall of China. China, known as the home to one of the earliest human civilizations, boasts numerous groundbreaking inventions such as paper and gunpowder. Additionally, it's the birthplace of the longest man-made structure ever created, the Great Wall of China. Stretching a staggering 21,000 kilometers and traversing over 400 towns in northern and central China, this iconic marvel is often mistakenly thought of as a single continuous wall. In reality, it comprises a series of fortifications and ramparts whose origins date back to the period between the 8th and 5th centuries BC. During that period, China was fragmented into numerous smaller states that engaged in constant conflicts, vying to expand their territories. Faced with frequent external threats, the rulers of the smaller states initiated the construction of towering walls as a means to deter potential intruders. By the 3rd century BC, the warning states came together under the rule of Qin Dynasty, and their emperor took on the task of not only extending the existing wall, but also linking various sections. Nevertheless, it was during the much later Ming Dynasty, which ascended to power in the 14th century, approximately 1700 years later, that the most renowned segment of the wall were constructed. A significant portion of the wall, including some of its most formidable segments, was erected during this period, primarily to defend against the Mongol tribes. The materials employed in the construction of the Great Wall varied significantly, depending on the type of terrain the wall traversed and the resources accessible in the surrounding areas. In numerous locations, the wall was fashioned from compacted soil and wood, while the sturdiest portions of the wall were crafted using marble, bricks, and a unique ingredient that has contributed to its enduring preservation throughout the centuries. This distinctive ingredient is an unconventional mortar mixture that includes sticky rice. This innovative mortar, introduced during the Ming Dynasty, has proven to be as robust and water-resistant as cement. It effectively sealed the bricks so tightly that weeds were unable to grow in the gaps between them. Many sections constructed during the Ming Dynasty continue to stand robustly to this day, enduring even extreme weather conditions and seismic activity. Nonetheless, erecting the longest man-made structure was an immensely challenging endeavor. Frequently, immense stones and oversized bricks had to be transported to mountaintops and across demanding terrains. Lacking the aid of powerful machinery, laborers were compelled to rely solely on their bare hands, often covering several kilometers in the process, which tragically resulted in deaths due to hunger and exhaustion. Regrettably, numerous laborers lost their lives during the wall's construction. Presently, only rough estimates can be provided, with some sources suggesting the toll may have reached approximately 400,000 fatalities. The Great Wall of China stands as a testament to the expertise and tireless efforts of countless laborers. Many segments of the wall have withstood the test of time, drawing in more than 10 million visitors annually. However, this enduring popularity may pose challenges in the future. While innovative mortar techniques and sturdy stone blocks have contributed to the preservation of the wall, not all sections have received the same level of maintenance. Approximately one-third of the wall has gradually vanished over the years, primarily due to adverse weather conditions. Human activities, including locals pilfering building materials and excessive tourism, have also played a role in the wall's deterioration. Despite certain sections having disappeared, the sheer size of the wall has given rise to numerous popular myths, including the misconception that it can be seen from the moon. However, this notion is incorrect. The claim regarding its visibility from the moon was initially made in the 1930s, a time when no one had ventured to the moon or even into outer space. Even Neil Armstrong, the first person to set foot on the moon, was asked about the Great Wall's visibility on numerous occasions. However, while he could observe continents, lakes, and bodies of water, 
no human-made structure was visible from the moon. If you find this video interesting, please remember to like and subscribe to Megalux. Next, we delve into the mysteries of a world wonder that remained abandoned and concealed for many centuries – Machu Picchu. Situated at an elevation of 2400 meters above sea level in the Andes Mountains of Peru, this enigmatic city is nestled within a breathtaking natural landscape and was once the dwelling place of a population ranging from 300 to 1000 residents. Machu Picchu holds historical significance as a site from the Inca Empire, which at its zenith stood as the largest empire in the Americas. Erected during the early 15th century, the city's remnants offer a glimpse into the remarkable architectural prowess of the Inca civilization. The city's ruins encompass approximately 200 structures, all meticulously constructed from finely carved granite stones that were ingeniously fitted together without the use of mortar. The stones were joined with such precision that not even a sheet of paper could be inserted between them. This meticulous craftsmanship rendered the buildings exceptionally resilient to earthquakes. In the event of seismic activity, the stone walls would shift slightly and then reposition themselves without causing the structures to collapse. Given Peru's susceptibility to frequent seismic events, this building technique likely accounts for why the majority of the structures at Machu Picchu remain standing to this day. However, the reasons behind the construction of this city in such an isolated location, as well as its subsequent abandonment, remain subjects of debate among researchers. Some scholars proposed that the city was designed as a regal retreat for the Inca emperor and a luxurious escape for the privileged elite. On the other hand, there are those who suggest that it might have served as an ideal refuge to safeguard the emperor in the event of a foreign invasion. Given the sacred significance attributed to the surrounding mountains by the Incas, it is also conceivable that Machu Picchu was established as a religious center to pay homage to the awe-inspiring landscape. This hypothesis gains further credence from the presence of numerous temples within the city, including the remarkable Temple of the Sun, renowned for its meticulous construction and use of premium materials. Nevertheless, the precise motive for constructing Machu Picchu remains shrouded in uncertainty. What is known, however, is that the city did not remain inhabited for an extended duration. By 1528, less than a century after its inception, the Spanish conquest of the Inca Empire commenced. Fearing plunder and devastation, the residents of Machu Picchu chose to abandon the city. To safeguard their former home, they initiated the strategy of burning down the surrounding forest, effectively erasing any traces of paths leading up the mountain. This strategy proved to be effective in preserving the city. The Spanish invaders, despite their extensive conquest in the region, never stumbled upon the city of Machu Picchu. Following their victory in 1572, many of the larger Inca cities met with destruction, including Vilcabamba, which was the final Inca city to succumb to Spanish forces. However, Machu Picchu remained concealed due to the absence of any written records about it and the lack of visible access. It was not until more than three centuries later that American explorer and historian Hiram Bingham led a small expedition to Cusco with the aim of locating the lost city of Vilcabamba. Upon arriving at a remote settlement on the outskirts of Cusco, the expedition members inquired with a local farmer about ancient ruins in the vicinity. The farmer informed them about the extensive ruins situated high in the mountains, prompting the explorers to embark on a mule ride along the trails to reach the site on July 24, 1911. Initially, Bingham believed that he had stumbled upon the long-lost city of Vilcabamba. However, it was later determined that the ruins were in fact Machu Picchu. Today, more than a century after its discovery, Machu Picchu stands as one of the most visited and revered destinations worldwide. In our exploration of the final wonder of the world in this video, we journey over 5000 years back in time to the emergence of ancient Egypt, one of history's most advanced civilizations, along the banks of the Nile River. Even to this day, humanity continues to admire the culture and achievements of the ancient Egyptians in various realms, encompassing mathematics, language, medicine, and notably, architecture. One of their most remarkable accomplishments, the Great Pyramid of Giza, remains an enduring marvel that continues to captivate people worldwide. This colossal structure was erected in a mere 27 years and initially soared to a height of 146.5 meters. It comprised a staggering 2.3 million blocks, each with an average weight comparable to that of an SUV. The enduring belief held by some even today that it might have been constructed by extraterrestrial beings 
underscores the extraordinary level of advancement achieved by the ancient Egyptians. In its original state, the Great Pyramid sported a different appearance. It was adorned with smooth, white limestone casing stones, which concealed the pyramid's inner core and caused it to gleam brilliantly under the desert sun. Furthermore, the pinnacle of the pyramid was adorned with a capstone coated in gold, enhancing its splendid appearance and making it visible from several kilometers in every direction. As time elapsed, the polished casing stones became loose and were removed for the construction of other monuments, including the Cairo Citadel and numerous mosques throughout the capital. Consequently, the Great Pyramid of Giza now stands at a reduced height of 138.5 meters. The question that arises is, how did the ancient Egyptians accomplish this monumental feat? In spite of the lack of advanced tools and modern technology, how did the ancient Egyptians approach the tasks of quarrying, transporting and positioning these massive stone blocks? A substantial portion of these blocks originated from quarries situated in the vicinity of the pyramid, specifically in the area referred to as the central field. It is believed that they utilized wooden sleds to transport these blocks across the sandy terrain. However, when the sleds traversed the hot sands, they often dug into the ground, presenting a formidable challenge. The ingenious solution devised by the ancient builders to overcome this obstacle entailed pre-wetting the sand. This practice effectively reduced friction and solidified the sand, greatly facilitating the process of moving these heavy blocks to the construction site. In contrast, the white limestone utilized for the pyramid's outer casing had to be transported by boat from Tura, a location situated approximately 10 kilometers to the south. An even more remarkable revelation is that researchers have ascertained that roughly 8,000 tons of granite stones were obtained from Aswan, a location situated approximately 900 kilometers south of the Nile. These granite stones, which were employed in the construction of the King's Chamber, each weighed a staggering 80 tons, a weight roughly equivalent to that of 12 adult African elephants. The subsequent formidable challenge revolved around the precise installation of these colossal stones as construction progressed to greater heights. Over the centuries, various theories have been proposed by scientists, with the majority of them focusing on the use of ramps. In the absence of cranes and contemporary construction equipment, ramps are believed to have been the only practical method for conveying these massive stone blocks towards the summit of the pyramid. The first hypothesis posits that they utilized a single straight ramp on one side of the pyramid, which was progressively elevated during the construction process. In order for such a ramp to be practical, its incline would need to be limited to a maximum of around 8%, as any steeper would make it excessively arduous to hold the stones upwards. However, this approach would necessitate the ramp to extend for a distance of approximately 1.8 kilometers. The construction of such a colossal ramp would constitute a massive undertaking, possibly even surpassing the challenge posed by building the pyramid itself. The second, more efficient approach involves a ramp encircling the exterior of the pyramid, ascending towards the summit. The issue with this ramp design is that the corners would not be completed until the end of the construction process. This would render it exceptionally challenging to accurately measure the angles at the corners and nearly impossible to guarantee that the corners align perfectly and meet precisely at the apex. In 2003, French architect Jean-Pierre Houdin, dissatisfied with the existing explanations, introduced an alternative theory. After approximately seven years of extensive research and the development of 3D models, he postulated that an external ramp would have been practical for constructing only the initial third of the pyramid, starting from its base. For the remaining portion of the structure, they might have employed internal ramps in a corkscrew configuration, ascending towards the top. This approach would yield a much smaller ramp for the first third and make it easier to align the corners. There is even evidence that lends support to this concept. In the 1980s, the Great Pyramid of Giza was subjected to microgravimetry, a method for measuring object density. Although the primary objective was to locate concealed chambers within the pyramid, one of the images acquired suggests that the internal ramp theory might provide an explanation for the lower density areas spiraling around the pyramid. What is observable are regions within the pyramid that exhibit a lower density, potentially indicating the presence of tunnels utilized during the construction of the pyramid. Regrettably, these areas have not been subjected to closer examination due to the absence of discovered entrances to these tunnels. In addition to the mystery of how the Great Pyramid was constructed, there is a compelling aspect regarding who the builders were. 
According to a commonly held myth, initially proposed by the Greek historian Herodotus, the Great Pyramid was constructed by slaves. Nonetheless, multiple research endeavors have suggested that this assertion is highly unlikely. Archaeologists have uncovered remnants of villages specially constructed to house the thousands of workers, who in all probability came from settlements along the Nile River, seeking employment. The notion of slavery was further refuted in 2010, when Egypt unveiled newly unearthed tombs containing a dozen skeletons of individuals who had participated in the construction of the pyramid. The skeletons were impeccably preserved and interred with jars that had once contained beer and bread, intended for the workers' afterlife. The consistent adherence to the same burial rituals as those reserved for Egyptian kings and elites attests to the high regard in which the workers were held. To this day, the precise methodology of the pyramid's construction remains unverified, and it's possible that the complete truth may never be uncovered. Nevertheless, one undeniable fact is that ancient Egypt possessed the resources and expertise necessary to complete this monumental project in just 27 years, a testament to their remarkable and highly advanced civilization. Would you like us to produce a second part featuring captivating stories about the other wonders of the world? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video enjoyable, be sure to like and subscribe to Megalux.